everyone. In this video we're going to go ahead and install Profound UI and Profound JS. The first thing we're going to go ahead and need to do is download the Profound UI installer which can be obtained for the Profound Logic website. When you're on there you can go ahead over to the products tab and select the download button within the visual designer section. Now you should note that I am already signed in. If you have just signed in and you haven't purchased Profound UI then you will actually be prompted to get a trial key and this will give you access to Profound UI, the Visual Designer and the Profound JS Connector uh, in just a trial key so you can try it out for free. Um, but you should go ahead and click download on the Profound UI uh, option and when you have it installed or when you have it downloaded you'll go ahead to the downloads folder or wherever it's downloaded to on your computer and run the setup. Now the first thing it will do is unzip the save file that has all the programs on it and this could this could take a, a few minutes. Okay, so when all the programs have finished unzipping, uh, the actual installer will be prompted and you'll have to run through some of the some of the legal, but that's okay. So you can carry on reading and go ahead and click next. When you've read the license agreement and agreed, you can go ahead and click next. Now, this, uh, this pop-up is for people that are upgrading, but if you're installing the first time, then there's no need to worry. Now, <coughs> it's fairly self-explanatory. It needs the host name to the box, which I, in my case is gonna be Watson Jr. It needs my username and password. And we can go ahead and take a look at the installation settings. Now, this is the destination library for Profound UI and the instance name that will, well the job will be called Profound UI. This is the port it will run under on the on the HTTP server. This will be the HTTP installation directory which will have the Profound UI <coughs> HD docs in. Uh, you can select the CCS ID but you can leave it as system default by well, system default by default and you can choose whether to enable Zend or not. And we're happy with all this general you know the defaults which is good. When you're happy you can go ahead and click install. Now this piece can also take some time, but really you can leave it open and go ahead and carry on with something else. And you may also be prompted about a firewall, <coughs> but you should go ahead and allow access so it can connect to the RBMI and transfer files. When the installation is finished, you'll actually be prompted whether you'd like to launch Profound UI in the browser. So you can leave this ticked and go ahead and click finish. And in your default browser, the Profound UI starting page or the welcome page should load. And you may be prompted for a username and password, which would be your user profile and password. And then it will load. And from here, you can go ahead and start uh, a genie session, uh, a visual designer session all from the welcome page here we have visual designer and here we have a profound UI there you go now we have profound UI installed the next step is installing uh, profound JS and to do this you're going to go ahead and you're going to need to SSH into your IBM I where you're installing it. So I have my session open. I'm going to do SSH Lallan at Watson Jr. That's the system I'm using. And now, if I make a directory where I want to install Profound JS, so I'll use the root slash Profound JS. That's where I'm going to install it, and then change to that directory. And of course, it should be empty. And the simple piece of installing Profound JS is quite simply npm install Profound JS. So 
So when NPM has finished downloading all the modules that Profound.js requires, it's going to ask you specific questions about the setup. So the first question is that it wants to know where the static files are for Profound UI, e.g. the htdocs. Now, because I installed into the www directory, this default value is correct for me, so I can leave this blank and just press enter. Now I'm going to specify the port number which I want the Profound.js server to run on and 8081 is also the port I'd like to run on so I'll leave that default to. Now it's going to want to ask me if I want to install the connector piece. Now if you've got the trial key then you, you are going to be able to use this so I'm going to leave that default yes. Enter the Profound.js connector library name so where the connector will be installed. I'll have that as profound in the Profound.js library as well. Um, the next question is whether I'd like to control the Profound.js instances with start TCP and NTCP server and I would also like that so I'll leave the default as yes. Server instance name. Now an instance is, uh, well the instance of Profound.js is where a subset of code can run so you can have multiple instances so you might want a development instance, a production instance, a QA instance for example. So let's call our instance uh, TJS dev. Auto start instance when TCP IP starts, yes. And then it will finish the installation. And now the installation is finished. So now we have Profound.js installed. And you can find out the version that you've installed is by going to the top of the hierarchy table and seeing that the first node is Profound.js at 2.1.0. That means we have Profound.js 2.1.0 running. Hooray! Now the first thing we should do is check if it's actually running. So if you open your web browser and open a new tab and go to the system that you've installed it on, onto port 8081 or wherever you installed it, slash connect4. This is an example program that we ship with Profound.js. Now if it loads, that means Profound.js has been installed and you can play as expected. There we go, we have Profound.js installed. Now we're going to learn a bit about instances. And to do this we're going to go ahead and need a 5250 session. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to Watson Jr. with my 5250 emulator. Now all the instances will run under the uh, Profound.js subsystem, so if you do work SPS job, Profound.js, as you can see we have our PGS dev instance running here. Now maybe I'd like to stop the instance. It's quite simple, I can do end tcp serve f4. The server application is star pjs and the instance name is the instance name pjs dev. PJS server ended. Now if we do a work SPS job for Found.js again, the instance is no longer running, which also means that our connect for uh, example won't run because the PJS server is offline. Now if we use start TCP server and we use star PJS with the instance name of PJS dev, the PJS server will start. We can do work SPS drop profound JS again and it's running. And if we refresh, the instance is running again. So that's how we install profound JS, profound UI, and we've started and stopped profound JS instances. So now you can start developing in profound JS under IBM I. Mm -hmm.